Hello everyone, my name is Mzwaba Charles and firstly I would like to thank everyone who managed to watch the first podcast. Thank you very much for your views, for your likes, for your comments and for your engagement. We hope that with this journey we will be able to give you some of the answers that you are looking for and some of the clarity that you are searching for. We hope to give you an an undiluted version of Masowe. One of the main purposes of the podcast for today is to enable people to understand the purpose of Masowe. For some of you that know and for some of you that do not know, Masowe is a place of healing, a place of prophecy, A church that is led by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit. So when people come, they come seeking healing for their illnesses. They come seeking solutions for their marriages. They come looking for assistance in their lives. But as a pattern that we've seen over time, people would then come to church just for those intentions, just to seek a remedy for their problems. But people have to understand, for those who are current, and for some of you who are going to come just to witness, some of you who are going to come just because you've been interested and want to get to know more about Masoe and to experience it for yourself. When you come to Masoe, do not come to seek miracles but come to seek God. Because in time, some people treat Masowe as a local pharmacy, a place that you go when it's in your time of need, when you are given a prescription, and then you carry out as what is prescribed, and then if your problem persists, you go back, and then if it's not, that's the end of it. But if you do things like that, you miss the main purpose of Masowe. Because the God that is helping you, the God that is healing you, the God that is giving you remedies for your problems, also has a message for you. So Masowe is, it is a place to get people back to God. That is one of the main, main purposes of Masowe, to call back God's people to Him. It is also a place of learnings, of teachings of love, gratitude and humility. So I will expand a little bit more on the core message of getting God's people back to him. So when the church was initially founded, the movement was founded by Baba Joani after when he had his time of when he was ill for a period of about four months where he struggled to talk and he struggled to walk. After that period, he went to a place called Gomore Marimba, or a place called Mount Marimba in English. And it was in this place that he spent 40 days and 40 nights praying and giving praises to God. And it was known that the only thing of which he had to eat was wild honey, And in that time, people came to see him. And when they saw him, they could hear a multitude of voices that were singing and was giving praises to God in heaven. But when they saw him, they could only see a single person. And they saw him, he had a white, seamless garment, he had a Bible, and he had a staff that he had with them. So they were amazed to where all these voices were coming from when they could only see one person. And then the message of which they heard him speaking, he said, I have been sent by God in order to get his people back to him, to tell them to turn away from their sins, to turn away from adultery, from rape and from witchcraft. This was one of the core messages that Baba Jawani was given, one of the core messages of Masowe. So when people saw him, 
and they saw the works of which he was doing and the miracles that were taking place, the colonizers of the time, they took the items that I listed, the seamless garment, the Bible, and the staff, and they took them away with them. They thought that the power and the works of which he was showing was due to these items that he had, but little did they realize that the power was in the person that had been anointed by the Lord. The power was in Baba Juan. And he carried on the works, and he carried on the miracles, teaching people and calling them to come back to the Lord. And people would come, they would come with the items that they used for witchcraft. They would come and confess their sins. And many miracles happened and took place on that mountain. And it was one of the initial gatherings of which the works of God was shown through Baba Jawan. And also, as we said, that Masawait is a place where you learn humility, a place where you are humbled. When you hear the name Masawe, it means wilderness. It means a place that is not owned by anyone. So Baba Jawani was called Jawani Masawe, which meant John of the Wilderness. It meant that it was a place which no one could claim as their own, but it was given to the Holy Spirit so that no human person could be able to claim ownership and so that all could be equal under God. That's why you see that we sit on the floor to humble ourselves in front of the Lord because when we pray, we truly believe we're in the presence of the Lord and the miracles and the works that we see just reaffirm for us that we are truly in the presence of the Lord. And also another th story that you hear from Baba Joani, he sang when people would see him. He would always kneel down and greet people. He would greet those that were younger to him. He would greet whether they were male or whether they were female. It did not matter to him, but he would kneel and he would greet. And we were taught of this when we went to Kenya. And they said, do you know why Baba Juwani would do this? He said he showed himself by humbling himself that this is what a person of God should do. Even though he was the founder and even though he was the messenger, he said, but no. I must put myself under people of those that I serve in order to give glory to God and to show people that the God I serve is greater. And just because he has sent me does not mean that he has made me greater than you, but he has made me a servant unto you so that his message must be delivered and all glory should go back to him. And this links very well with one of the main purposes of Apostles of Mujinjigwa. If you hear one of the verses that was sung, say, Kana uchida Emanuel, tanga wada nai. A translation in English means, if you want to be able to love Emmanuel, to love Jesus, you first have to love the na your neighbors, your mother, your brother, your cousin, your sisters, your colleagues. For you cannot love the invisible God that you are unable to see and, un and be unable to love his reflection that you can see every day. So that's what it means for us to be able to get closer to God. And this is what we're trying to be taught by Masori. So I hope that I'm able to give a good clarification of the purpose of my story. So when you decide to come visit us, or when you are listening to the preachings and to the songs, you remember that the main purpose of my story is to get God's people back to him. Thank you very much for listening to me today. And I hope that you will be able to carry on this journey with us and we'll be able to keep moving forward and hopefully God will protect us. And lastly, we'd like to say congratulations to our brothers and sisters in Kenya who settled with Baba Jawani in Rwanda in the 1960s. They finally be granted citizenship. 
Glory be to God.